Hey guys, so yesterday was the first time that I actually managed to authenticate uh, using OAuth in a custom API call and I decided that I think it would be helpful to share it uh, with you in the group. So for this particular example, I will be using Shopify. Uh, it has a pretty good API and also it does have uh, an option to authenticate using API keys. Um, for the, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll be using OAuth, okay? So the goal of this essentially request would be to query to get all of the products that we have in our Shopify store. And for that, we'll be using uh, the get, retrieve all, a list of products request uh, as per the API documentation. Now, if we go to OAuth, and obviously this will be a bit different for, for each uh, service that you are using, but in general, it will be the same. Uh, here can I see a diagram of the OAuth flow. You can study on your own, but uh, the most important goal that we have really is get this access token, which will then be able to include in all of our requests and essentially authenticate in a very similar manner to uh, the way we do with uh, API tokens or with bearer tokens. Now, there are a few steps involved in this. Uh, the first one in this case is actually creating going to the partner dashboard and creating a custom app. Uh, this app will be um, private, so not displayed on the marketplace and can only be connected to, in this case, just one store. So let's go to the partner dashboard and create a new app. We'll be creating a custom app. Uh, app name will be auth test. And here we have a few URLs. Uh, which will become uh, important in the later stages. Uh, for now, we can just say test.com uh, and okay, HTTPS and HTTPS test.com. As we go through the through the tutorial, we'll actually update them. So let's create that. And great, we have our API keys over here, and then we can also generate a, a link for. Uh, installing the app over here. Great, we have the first step done. Now let's generate the installation link. And um, as said before, uh, in this case, uh, for for a private app, you can only connect it to one particular store. And so we'll need uh, the URL of that store over here. Let's go to generate link. Uh, we choose the merchant store and we generate the link. Fantastic. Okay, uh, we have the install link ready. Now the next step would actually be uh, would be to actually ask for for the permission. So send uh, send uh, a get request uh, to that link. And as you can see, uh, after the merchant clicks the links to the install app, uh, your app, so the app that we are creating, will receive a get request uh, on the app URL that we have specified. Uh, in the um, in the app settings, right? So these are the ones that we can find over here in the app setup, the app URL, and then redirection URLs. Now, uh, it will provide the shop, or the timestamp, and the HMAG uh, query parameters. Uh, in these cases, we're actually not building um, a full application, let's say, around it, and I just authenticating for one account. We actually don't need uh, any of that information, but we still have to um, initiate one request to that URL, to the installation uh, URL, uh, before we can actually uh, proceed uh, with uh, the rest of the steps. So let's do that. We can just paste it in the browser and press enter. Uh, and that should be good. Uh, otherwise, you can also do the same in, uh, in uh, Postman. Just do a get request to this URL. And that's it. As long as it succeeds, uh, we can continue. Now, the next step would be to actually um, copy this URL over here. And um, and essentially, we have to provide some of the details right here. So we need to provide the shop, the shop name. Uh, we need the API key for our app. We need the scopes that we'd like to add to this particular access token, right? This can be found as well in the API documentation uh, specific to your service. Then the redirect URL, so this will be the URL 
um, the, where essentially the data in the next steps, um, uh, which will give us a specific code, uh, will be sent. Okay, and for this, we will actually to need to define, let's say, a webhook or a simple server. Uh, in this particular case, I will actually set up a webhook in Integromat and catch that code that we will need to use in the later steps. Now, nonce is um, a specific feature, security feature, that you'd actually need to use in uh, like a fully built app. But yet again, we are just getting one token. It's not necessary in this case. We can just equal it to one. And then finally, access mode. In this case, we want offline access mode, which can which means that we will be able to do the request in the background, in the backend, and we'll set it to value. Okay. So let's prepare that URL before we actually access it in in our browser, and we'll do that as well with with Postman for for ease of use. Uh, let's copy that. Okay. So our API key can be found over here in the partner dashboard. The scope uh, in this particular case will be just read products as we are just getting the list of products. Uh, the redirect URL will now set it up. Uh, nonce will just be one and uh, grant um, options. So that the mode will be just value as per the documentation over here. Uh, now, for for the redirect uh, URL, we'll actually set up a custom webhook in uh, Integromat for this particular case. Okay, webhooks, custom webhook. Let's add it. Three. Save. Okay. And now let's just activate it. And the only thing uh, we need it really for is just to get that data uh, in, the, in the next step. Now let's copy as well uh, the URL that we have um, from the webhook and we'll need to add it to our app in the partner dashboard over here. In this case, app URL can stay the same. We don't really need it. Uh, so we paste it over here and we save. And we also add it over here in our request that we'll do in just a moment. Okay, so now everything is ready. We can copy this out and actually go to the browser um, and initiate the request. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, I'll also need to fill in uh, this shop parameter over here with your shop name. And now, as you can see, we are presented with this authentication uh, request for this particular app. As you can see, we have the scopes over here, which is just view products. And as soon as we click install app, it will actually send a request to the redirect URL uh, that is already activated in, in webhook, uh, in Integromat to, to, to catch uh, the parameters that we need. Okay, let's go to the next step. As you can see, when the merchant clicks the install button on the prompt, they are redirected to your app server and the authorization code is passed in the confirmation redirect. Okay, so let's do that. Let's click install app. Accepted, that's a message from Integromat, so it worked. Let's refresh over here and let's see actually this operation that we got over here. As you can see, we have all of these details, right? Um, and this is the particular code that we'll actually need for the next step. Now, as well, if it would be a real app, you would need to do some security checks over here as well, but we can, again, skip this uh, for the moment. And the last thing to actually get a permanent access token in this case uh, is to make a post request to this specific URL, passing in the client ID, the client secret, which are the API, API keys, and then the code that we have over here. Uh, so let's do let's do that. And this will be in the request body. Okay. So post uh, the shop name of the machine for lawyers. It will be a post request. Um, then the body will be raw J. 
JSON. And so one of the variables will be code. And this is the code that we got uh, from uh, Integromat. Another one would be client, client ID and client secret. Okay, and we just then need to add these from the API keys over here. And the client secret key. Okay, now everything is ready. We can now send this uh, post request. And as you can see, we get our access token. And this is the thing that we, we need to actually start authenticating and making normal requests to our API, we also get the scope, in this case, just read products. So let's copy this, and let's actually uh, initiate uh, a new request to the to the API. Uh, we will add, uh, in the header section, uh, we will add uh, our API, our access token, and the way that we're gonna call it uh, is again, uh, is referenced in, uh, in the documentation, make an authenticated request, and we need to pass it as X Shopify access token. Again, it will be a bit different for uh, every API that you're gonna use. Uh, now, that's it. Now, the, uh, the URL of our particular request in this case for getting products will be just this. And we don't actually need anything else. So let's do that. And let's change this to the name of the store. Okay. Now, before we continue, let's actually change this to one and just test it without it. As you can see, we get invalid API key or access token. Now, if we now put the Shopify access token that we got and send it, we get our product test product two. Perfect, and all the data associated. And just like this, you'll be able to use this access token. In this case, in this particular API, permanently, so we won't actually have to renew it. Uh, so you just have to store it somewhere and you'll be able to authenticate your requests like that. Uh, so it's a bit tedious to actually create it, but um, it's just a one time thing and then you can use it just as any other API token. Now, um, with some uh, APIs, you'll actually uh, need to renew it. So it has an expiration date. For example, for WebEx, I believe this is uh, something like 14 days. Uh, and after that, the access token is actually uh, expired. Now, you do get a refresh token. And so you can set up a simple uh, automation, scheduled automation that will run, for example, every 13 days or every 14 days uh, in Integromat. And it will need to make a post request to this specific uh, URL uh, with, the, again, the client ID, client secret, uh, grant type will be refresh token and then the refresh token that, the, that you also got from this initial request. And uh, as a result, it will give you back uh, the new uh, access token, which you can store somewhere in Airtable, in internal storage, in, in the Gromat or somewhere else, and keep using uh, your automations uh, just as before, just updating that uh, every time uh, a new one comes in. Uh, so that was that. Um, this one, again, this is only for authentication, authenticating just one particular account. Uh, if you actually want to build a whole flow that will be able to multiple, uh, authenticate multiple users and get multiple access tokens, uh, you can still do that with uh, no allow code, uh, with, for example, Integromat, where you're actually able to set up redirect requests uh, once a webhook, for example, is received. And uh, it is a bit more complicated, but you can use a combination of, of several scenarios and uh, an internal data store to actually manage all of that uh, for, your, for your custom app. And in the next video, I'll actually explain how to use uh, redirect requests uh, from within Integromat, which is pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, I hope this was helpful and let me know if you have uh, any questions.